Good morning guys. So I am hiding out in the milk room right now. It is a very chilly morning. It's zero degrees out this morning. So extremely cold. Um, it's not cold in the barn, but it's much warmer in the milk room. So that's why I'm hiding out in here. We've got the heater on and I'm just kind of soaking that up right now. We're just about ready to start milking. There was one thing that I wanted to show you guys. So let's head out into the barn. I'll show you guys. This right here is milk I'm warming up for uh, one of the calves, which kind of gives away what I want to show you guys. But um, I'm warming up some milk and I usually just put their it's still colostrum me, so I usually just put that in some hot water and heat it up that way. Um, this is the extra milk that we have and I do have my bucket milker here all clean and ready to go. I do have to carry that out because we have to milk out the mother obviously because she just calved a couple days ago. So I'll take that out with me now. The girls are eating first crop dry bale right now. But we'll stop right here because this is part of what I wanted to show you guys. So this is one of our oldest cows right here. Um, she's, I'd have to go look at her chart, but I'm pretty sure she's around 19 going on 20. Hi. <laughs> What's the matter? Anyway, um, so yeah, she calved two days ago. I'll go around and show you guys her bag. She's one of three purebred ash ears that we have. So this is what her bag is looking like. We were very lucky with her. She calved on her own, um, didn't have milk fever or anything, super healthy, doing great. So yeah, that's the old lady, doing really, really good. Now I will show you her baby. So this is baby right here. She had a beautiful little heifer calf. She has eaten already. The other calf is still here and I have not fed him yet, um, but she's gonna stand up for you guys. She's a gorgeous little heifer. Mom did a good job, didn't she? Yes. She's like all legs. She's really, really tall. Typically, we would jump right over milking and we just kind of get into the rest of our day. But since it's been a long time since I took you guys along with us milking, I thought maybe you guys might like to see some of that. I'm going to do my best to film some of that for you guys. It's kind of hard in a tie stall. I would imagine it's easier in a parlor because all the cows come to you. But in a tie stall, obviously, you have to move down through the cows. But I will try my best. So we're going to have a quick coffee break and then we'll start milking. So Brent just went inside to call the vet. He's going to order some more dry cow treatment. We have a lot of cows here that are ready to be dried off. We have one right here. We just dried her off yesterday. She's the last one um, that we had to dry off. And you can bump her just super, super easy. So we did dry her off yesterday and we've got her marked on her tail head there. Um, usually we have a leg band on them, but we did run out of those because they usually lose them in the pasture. So we do have to pick up some of those, but we do have her marked with a crayon. We know not to milk her in. But yeah, she was the last one that we could dry off. Now we're out of stuff, so he went in to call the vet. Hopefully he's getting quartermaster. I really like that stuff, but who knows.
the milk hose on this shorter. What? You definitely should have made the milk hose on this shorter. You shouldn't have listened to the guy at the store. Interesting way to sleep. So far, what? I like how she always looks like she's the queen when she's milking. She always rests her head on that bar and she's like, uh, I, I have to look, but it, I'm pretty sure she's like eight, nineteen, going on twenty. She's still got a lot of life left in her, don't you? milking probably didn't get a whole lot of really good footage because for some reason my camera tripod decided that it didn't want to work today so I pretty much had to hold the camera the whole time so I hope you guys at least enjoyed seeing some of milking but we got them all bedded and they're ready to lay down for the day so we only have one thing left to do before we get out of the barn for the day um, the bull is still out back in the free stall so I do have to go out there and break open his tank for him we have a heat wire on that big blue automatic tank out there um, so the water itself doesn't freeze, but obviously the top skims over. I do have to go break that open for him. But I did want to mention one other thing to you guys. So the barn cleaner chain has been working amazing, with the exception of last night. Last night was awful. So what happened was it didn't fall off or anything. Well, it did kind of fall off, but that wasn't really the whole problem. I'll take you guys in and show you what happened. Neil said it, it was a nightmare. <laughs> um, this whole thing, this whole head system here is I think around 1960s. So it's 60 years old, it is well used, but we do take really good care of it. We grease it all the time and everything. So it still works great. But what happened was, you can see we have a new bolt here and a new bolt here. So this one right here snapped off during the actual cleaning process. That made the chain actually slip up under this because that snapping kind of threw it back up like this, which wedged the chain underneath the wing board and ripped the chain off the sprocket bent this whole system right here so we had to take that whole plate off and that um, consists of this down here is actually attached to the swing board this spring and this whole uh, system out to here so we had to take that whole thing off which it's fun to get it out of there with that whole plate on the bottom and everything and we spent most of the night in the shop trying to you know twist it back and all kinds of things were bent we actually had to cut a piece out because the chain is supposed to ride in the middle of these two um, metal slides and one of them was bent so much that we actually just had to cut it off it is working perfectly now though we got that back on there we didn't get started milking until like six o'clock anyway so it was a very late night and we're thankful that it still works and it didn't screw everything up it could have really made a very very big mess if it hadn't ripped the chain off 
It could have just kept going if nobody was standing here watching it and ruined a lot of stuff. We're really, really lucky and I feel like that's the motto of this farm. Every video starts out, it's like, we were lucky today. Okay, so looks like we're gonna have to move the skid steer just a little bit. is a giant pain in the butt. It's so heavy. Okay. All right. So he's over there. He does have a wrap bale out here. So this is what the water tank looks like. Yay. Usually I just get out there and stomp on it. I got a pitchfork that I've been using, which worked really good. But I broke the handle off in it, so now I just have to use my feet until we get that fixed. <sighs> which really sucks, because then I have to pick the ice out with my hands, which is wonderful. Cold. I can hear it running, so Ooh, I gotta warm my hands up. Try that time. There. Now we're ready for the rest of our day. We are headed out to get a load of sawdust today. Um, we do need to go to the one that's farthest away from us. Um, hi. Ready to go? Yep. Oh. I was just saying how we gotta go to the one that's farthest away now. Yes. yes. Oh well. Twice as far. Yeah, the one that's closer burns their sawdust in the winter when it starts getting cold, so we don't get any anymore. We still have the snow though. Yep, won't lose it. Well, yeah, we're gonna lose it Sunday and Monday. Yeah, it's supposed to rain. We'll be all gone Monday. I love that silo over there. Yeah. It's really pretty. I think that's a harder too, like we had. That's not as big as I always was. Was yours that? Oh, yours was taller? Huh? Yours was taller? Yeah, ours was like 75 feet. Wow. 20, 24 or 20 by 70. That's a big one. Yeah, nice one too, harder. But you said that makes the best silage. And... Yeah, upright silos are the best. They just nobody likes them because they're, they're work. So why it's, why did you change over to a bunk silo? Just because you had to, or well, you, I mean, you're yeah, other... yeah. I always was kind of twisting on the bottom because. You should clean them out every single year, let them dry something. But we didn't, and the bottom started twisting. So we tore it down. Everybody was putting up bunks, but bunks aren't, aren't as good as an upright. They just don't, they just don't make as good as silence. But back in those days, when we had ours in the early, uh, mid-70s, yeah. they had crappy on loaders. Mm -hmm. Just not very good on loaders. But they were only a pain from January and February. You several like right now they're, they're still fine. But yeah. Janu January and February they could be challenging. But they froze. But now the unloaders dig the ice more, so Yep. Yeah. But they make good silence. <laughs> what was that you always said about your grandpa said that what did he say? Oh we had two we had two unit we had two wood silos about 40 footers, two of them side by side. Unadilla, they were wooden, made, made in Unadilla, New York. Everybody had them when silos were, everybody had a Unadilla silo. But the unloaders were really cheap. Most of them were pack dry. Mm -hmm. And uh, my grandfather, he'd turn it on and it would just barely come out of the silo. And he'd come out all frustrated and say, the silage isn't coming. He said, my cat could get out kick it out faster than that. <laughs> cat. <laughs> I like that picturing that. It's like a cat like digging at it. <laughs> Won't really need the heater today. That sun is hot. No. I brought my sunglasses just in case. Not gonna try my wife oh, look how dirty back. they are. <laughs> I can't even see you. Okay, so we stop at the gas station and I'm just glad this truck isn't a diesel because it's 450. 
Although last year it was like 650, so. But still everything is super expensive. Brian is pumping gas right now. I'm leaning forward because I think this guy over here was noticing that I'm filming and I have a fear of filming in public. I always feel like they're looking at me like, what is she doing? She's weird. They're not wrong, but it still makes me nervous.
pretty good. Well, you got it good. Well, I'm not an expert like you, but... Mm. True. You don't need it, do you? Uh, you don't need it, do you? Not really. Well, yeah, I could use it. Thank you. Yep. And we're off. We are stopped at this store here on the way back. Um, because our vet did drop off the dry cow treatment at this place. He was supposed to drop it off at the feed store, which is where he usually leaves it for us, but he couldn't make it there, so he dropped it off here instead, which I am very excited about because this place has coffee and baked goods, so I'm pretty sure Brent's gonna get a coffee and some sort of sweet. Um, so I'm really excited about that, but you guys probably aren't surprised because I'm either drinking coffee or eating something. Other than farming, that's pretty much all I do, so. Here he comes and he's got a lot of stuff. <laughs> He got two boxes of dry cow stuff. New England coffee. So he had one quarter master and one spectra mast. Spectra mast pretty good too. I do like quarter master though. New England coffee. <laughs> So we just made it back to the farm. Um, it's warmed up a lot. It's like 25 degrees now. You guys can see um, the snow is actually dripping off the roof right now. So it's warmed up quite a lot. Before we lose all this snow, because this weekend it's supposed to rain and be like 50 degrees. So we're definitely gonna lose all of the snow. I wanted to take my sled out for a quick ride. Uh, I think Brent's gonna take his out too. I don't know, his is outside. I think there's something wrong with the ski. So he might have to fix that first. I don't know if he needs help doing that. I'm not really sure where he went, um, but yeah. I thought I'd take you guys with us. You could see a little different view of the farm and have some fun. is frozen. It's so beautiful out here. You can tell right over there where it's not frozen. You can tell where it's not frozen, past yeah. that. Well, it's frozen, but it's not quite as much ice as here. 
There's plenty here. Oh, plenty. I bet there's six inches of ice skates. Or more. Where's the ice skates when you need them? It's beautiful out here. That was a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Just a little of what we do when there's no field work to be done, no spreading to be done, and it's kind of a little bit slow in the winter for a farm, but there's still plenty to do to keep yourself busy and have some fun. Uh, so thank you guys so much for watching. Um, as always, please don't forget to like and comment below. And subscribe, of course. Uh, yeah, keep it real, keep farming, and hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.